Um, so yeah, I took a couple months hiatus from YouTube for a bit. But thank you for being here. Thank you for sticking around. It was not my intention whatsoever. Summer was just kind of chaotic. Yeah, and I took a hiatus a little bit. Wasn't feeling motivated. Wasn't feeling... Just wasn't feeling it. I was also just really busy. I mean, I got reading done this whole freaking time. So... I will eventually talk about all the books that I read in June, July, and August. June and July will probably be its own thing. August will be its own thing. So we'll talk about that. But for now, and I'm back, and I'm hoping to do this again. So we're going to do my September TBR. I am going to structure this a little differently. So beforehand, I was like, okay, I'm going to do my Pokemon cards, choose my TBR, but I'm only going to do it every two months. But then it didn't matter because I did the, that one for June, July, and then did another TBR for July for the Tarot Readathon. So didn't do one for August. I actually liked not doing one for August. It was just able to mood read. I think I just needed that. So for September, I'm still doing my Pokemon cards, choose my TBR. However, after that, I'm going to frame it in the way that like another YouTuber does, and I will have her link down in the description down below and have her name here because I don't remember it offhand right now. But basically how she does it is that she does a TBR jar like most people, a lot of people do. Does so many pulls per month. So she does like, sometimes she'll do a complete reset. But basically for, for the beginning she does like five to ten pulls depending on how she, much she'll think she, she'll read for that month. Put it on a TBR cart and then the next month, however many she managed to read the month before, that's how many she will pull. So does that make sense? So I, there's typically 10, maybe sometimes 11 in these packs. I will pull, I will do this pull pack. I will make a TBR for September. Come October, we'll see how many of the um, TBR pull, like how many I was able to read from my TBR and pull however many I read from like the freaking stacks that I have. Um, cause really I don't need any more Pokemon cards and I'm <laughs> getting frustrated with having, so like I, I like getting Pokemon cards. They're really fun. Um, but I don't think I necessarily will like constantly just need to keep filling this up. I think doing one for now is fine. And this pull from the pack, the, from the stacks that I already have, I will do maybe a reset every now and then, and like get another one, and that's fine because my local books are actually just sell singles, so that'll be great. I think that's I think that's what I'll do. So I'm always like this is the one I'm choosing. It's the Fusion Sword and Shield Fusion Strike, and similarly, kind of like a um, TBR jar. I ha if you haven't seen this before, I have a whole playlist, so I'll have that linked. But basically, I have my booster pack of Pokemon cards. Each Pokemon type has a prompt attached to it. I have a list down below if you ever want to do it yourself and to hold me accountable. And basically, I mean, they're random, right? So then I just pick my TBR based off those prompts. So let's go ahead with the first one. This is a trainer card, which is, which is a cross switcher. It's an item. I believe the item card is a library book, which works because I do have a couple library books out. An item trainer card is a library book. So I think for this... Okay, so for the item trainer card, I am going to put, put the picture here. Um, basically, this is uh, Simon Montgomery's Search for the Golden Moon Bear. I love Simon Montgomery's work. She is a naturalist writer. She did The Soul of an Octopus, um, The Hummingbird's Gift of Time and Turtles. And this is one of her older works that my library happen to have. And so it's The Search for the Golden Moon Bear. That's all I really want to know going into this. I've only recently learned about moon bears after reading the eight Eight Bears, which was another nonfiction by another author who I forgot the name of, but it looks like this. And there's only like eight types of bears in the world, which is crazy to me. But Moon Bears is one of them. I think they're the ones in China or in Asia in general that are being like not hunted, but trapped and put in cages so that they can get their gallbladders drained 
for some kind of medicinal purpose that doesn't have actual anything to do with it. I don't know. Maybe that's not the one. Because there's a sun bear and there's a moon bear and one of them get trapped like that and get like their gallbladders like constantly drained for which okay um but i'm curious about this one there's others i should be reading but i want to read this one <laughs> next <laughs> this is breloom which is the evolved form of shroomish which is a grass pokemon and for grass pokemon is to read a book with some kind of botanical element on the cover so for breloom i think i'm going to go ahead and do a sequel and that is this wicked fate by kaylin baron kaylin baron Baron. Um, this is the second book in This Poison Heart. Um, the ending threw me off for that one, but basically we are following Breeceys who has like plant magic and ha is adopted by two women, uh, but then gets this mysterious letter that she's essentially inherited her family's estate from her aunt who recently passed away. They go to the estate because they're having issues with their shop anyway. Um, and so that Breeceys can kind of get like connected with her family in a way and help her with her plant magic. But then something goes awry. That's, um, that's, that's, that's it. It's been a while since I read it. I've been wanting to read this one. But like I said, like the ending of the first one, like threw me for a loop. Like I was not expecting that. I can't, it felt like it came out of nowhere. Um, but I've been wanting to read this. So I think this gives like crisp going into all vibes so and I also believe it's sapphic also it's a gorgeous cover so that's what I'm picking for Braylon Next. <coughs> this is Hariyama which is the evolved form of Mac Makohita um, which is a fighting Pokemon and for fighting Pokemon it's to read an author that I've read from before which oh, that's what I want great with Caleb Barron okay I know this book, <laughs> are you tired of, um, you're going to be tired of like hearing about it because I'm tired of talking about it. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why I want to structure my TBRs now as I'm structuring them. That way I don't have to keep talking about it. Um, <laughs> about ones that are going to constantly be popping up because I do want to read them and just didn't that for the fo the following month. So this is Indian Burial Ground by Nick Medina. I, I, I it's on my nightstand <laughs> to try to get me to read it. I do want to read it. Um, so this is Nick Medina's sophomore book. Uh, the first one, what was the first one called? What was it called? I don't remember. Um, oh, Sisters of a Lost Nation. <laughs> I remembered without good reads. Okay. This is in the same universe as Sisters of a Lost Nation. Sisters, uh, it's, I don't, there was quite, so I read Sisters of a Lost Nation for a, a literally dead book club. Like, like I was like asked to be a host for that. So that was really cool. I'll be linked down below if you ever want to check it out. You know, no big deal. But there was a question during that live show, just like, do you need to read them in order? Um, so this one follows a character that was in Sisters of a Lost Nation, like 17 years or 10 years after, um, of the sort. So we are following, um, Noemi Broussard who wants a fresh start. Uh, she's with a boyfriend that actually she's her right. They were getting ready to move off the reservation, but then her boyfriend is found dead. It's said that it's a possible suicide. That doesn't make sense to Naomi or Noemi. What's her name? Noemi. And she thinks there's something sinister like on the reservation now. So, and it's like, this is happening just in, uh, like, just as, like, her uncle who left, like, years ago was coming back. So, we'll see. I actually did try to listen to this one, um, because actually one of the, Erin, who it occasionally posts on YouTube, but is mostly on Instagram, who I have, will also have linked down in the descri description down below. Go check her out. She actually voices Noemi's part in the audiobook, which I was like, yes, go Erin. Like, this, this is great. But I don't know. I forget the name of the male narrator for the other perspective here, but I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So I want to physically read this. And I am a slow physical reader, so we'll see how this, like, so that, it's on, it's on this TBR. I don't have to talk about it again unless I finish it, so. Next. 
So this is an energy card. An energy card is to match the color of the cover, book cover, with the color of the card. And Sidekick is always interesting because not very many books have purple covers. And I'm a little chaotic. Like I said, I haven't done this in a while and I'm a little hyped up and I still want to go get coffee. So for this purple energy card, I think I'm going to go ahead and go for Looking for Smoke by K.A. Cobell. This is um, also an, another indigenous read. I've not read K.A. Cobell before, but we are on a Blackfeet reservation. We are on Blackfeet reservation following Mara, who recently just moved there. And it's feeling like an outsider because like she's now going to the school on the reservation and everyone's kind of grown up with each other on the reservation so they're kind of making her feel like an outsider um she thinks she's finally making a friend when someone invites her to be a part of a giveaway for their sister's disappearance like I said, she thinks she's making friends only to find out that someone from the giveaway has died and the members of the giveaway uh, were the last ones to see her alive so now they're just suspects um that's all i know that's all i really want to know there is purple elements to this cover i think that's going to be close enough so yes we're going with that one and i will probably not have audiobooks on this tbr just as a heads up mostly because <laughs> I, I feel like audiobooks for me are like fillers of just like they, I know I read slowly physically, but audiobooks I like get through pretty quickly if I'm in the mood for them. Um, but it really like, I like, you think I'm a mood reader with like physical books. I am such a mood reader when it comes to audiobooks. So it really just, I think having a physical TBR is good that and it'll encourage me to read physical books and get all this taken care of. So, not to say that I won't listen to some of these, but that's, that's the goal. Okay. <coughs> this is Gorbis, which is the evolved form of Clam Pearl. It's a water Pokemon, so it's to read a book that is set in a different country, continent, or planet. Um, hold that thought, my battery is about to die, so we may change up a little bit here. So for, so, you're a little crooked now. I don't know what happened. So, batteries changed and I figured out my pick for Gorbis. Um, so a different country, continent, or planet. Um, technically space is outside the country. So I'm gonna go with Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. I did start this a little bit ago and just, I'm trying, I just wanna get through it further. Um, this one, Claire Kovalik is days away from being unemployed, made obsolete when her beacon repair crew picks up a strange distress signal. With nothing to lose and no desire to return to Earth, Claire and her team decide to investigate. What they find is shocking. The Aurora, a famous luxury space liner that vanished on its maiden tour of the solar system more than 20 years ago. A salvage claim like this would set Claire and her crew up for life, but a quick search from the ship reveals something isn't right. Whispers in the dark, flickers of movement, messages scrawled in blood. Claire must fight to hold on to her sanity and find out what really happened on the Aurora before she and her crew meet the same ghastly fate. So, yeah. I've been wanting to read this. Like I said, I'm just like, I've been, I've also been just like jumping from one book to the other. That's what I feel like happens when I'm like not held, not holding myself accountable to a TBR so hopefully this will help give me some structure as well so yeah that's my pick for Gorbis. Next. This is Baltoy which is a fighting Pokemon so another book by a reader uh, or sorry another book by an author that I've read from before but this is a reverse hollow. So that means to read a backlist. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and put on another book that was also on a previous TBR that I wasn't able to get to, and that is Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. I have read T. Kingfisher before. I read um, What Moves the Dead, which I really enjoyed, and I read um, uh, House with Good Boy. Boy? Where was I going with that? A House with Good Bones. I also really enjoyed that. Uh, I also read A Wizard's Guide, A Wizard's Guide 
to uh, I forget what it, I don't know I know that Jan from Jan Agaton recently just read it and she enjoyed it I was okay with it I've heard mixed things about like T. King Fisher's like fairy tale retellings or like fair like fantasy um so we'll see about this but I really enjoy the cover it actually kind of matches the the card so that's nice um Let's see, this isn't a fairy tale where the princess marries a prince, it's the one where she kills him. After years of seeing her sister suffer at, at the hands of an abusive prince, Mara and the shy con covenant raised third born daughter has finally realized that no one is coming to their rescue. No one except for Mara. Uh, seeking help from a powerful grave witch, Mara is offered the tools to kill a prince if she can complete three impossible tasks. But as is the way in tales of princes witches and daughters, the impossible is only the beginning. On her quest, Mara is joined by the Grave Witch, a reluctant fairy godmother, a strapping former knight, and a chicken possessed by a demon. Together, the five of them intend to be the hand that closes around the throat of the prince and frees Mara's family and their kingdom from the tyrannous ruler at last. So, yeah. I think I'm very much still interested in it, so I'm curious to see how it goes. <laughs> Shelmet. I was like, what am I looking at? Okay, Shelmet, which is a grass type Pokemon, which is to be something with some kind of botanical elements on the cover. Okay, this may be cheating slightly, just, just slightly, um, but I'm gonna go with the Ornithologist Field Guide to Love. Okay, offhand, it doesn't look like there's any thing botanical on the cover, because, I mean, obviously, they, there's this, like, Phoenix-type creature, um, in gold leaf, but if you look in the back, there is like some viney floral elements, and that's what I'm counting. So, because I really want to get to this, this is like a fantasy romance of two ornitho ornithologists who are professional rivals, um, Beth Pickering and Devin Lockley, who are also professors in ornithology, and they're both after the same rare bird, magical bird. So, um, as you can see, I've already kind of started reading it, so I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna, uh, just, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> so. <laughs> this is Skarmory, which is a steel Pokemon, which is to read a nonfiction. This is perfect, because I can get another book that I'm also in the middle of. You'll hear more about some of these books in my book haul, so my apologies. Um. Cause I'm just hauling them um, but this one I've also already started and want to continue reading for September um, so for a summary I'm gonna go ahead and pick up what an owl knows the new science of the world's most en enigmatic birds by Jennifer Ackerman I read Jennifer Ackerman before um, I read the genius of birds it was like one of my first Goodreads giveaway books that I won that yeah um, but this one's all about owls. So I've been wanting to get more into Jennifer Ackman's work to see if I really do enjoy her work. Uh, like I said, I already started this, so I'm really excited. I know that like in a lot of indigenous cultures that, um, owls are seen as like a death bringer or messengers of bad news. So there's like this superstition with them, um, that folks don't like. I know that here locally we have a owl sanctuary actually that's not too far or on the reservation and people get mad when um, the school does like field trips there or like after school programs do field trips there. I love owls particularly. I think they're adorable. I think they're a necessity to our um, ecosystem but I also find them really fascinating so this has been really fun so far so I'm excited to continue it. This is Morpico which is a lightning Pokemon which is to read a quick read or whatever that means to me. Let's go ahead and pick up a children's book. So this is one of the ones that I got from ALA that I forgot to mention in my book haul so when you see that just know I forgot this book um, but that is a on a Mushroom Day by Chris Baker, illustrated by Alexandra Fink Eldy. Eldy? Fink Eldy? 
Um, but from my understanding, this is like a Canadian author. Hold on. Chris Baker is an author, professional mushroom lover, and founder of Chicory Naturalist, a nature shop and community space in Kings and Kingston, New York. When not in the shop, she can be found in the forest leading guided forays or exploring the understory with her partner and child. A passion for her reconnecting broken chains of generational knowledge about the natural world runs through all of Chris's endeavors. On a Mushroom Day is her first picture book. Alexander Alexandra Finkeldy is an illustrator based in Ottawa, Canada. Her art is focused on noticing and capturing the small, pleasant details of daily life, featuring organic subjects and natural textures. She has illustrated several picture books, including When the Storks Came Home, Talala, The Curious Leopard, Cub Who Joined a Lion Pride, and Saving the Spotted Owl. Um, so this one in particular, I believe, is just about mushrooms. On a mushroom day, you might feel the spring of soil beneath your step or he'll hear the birds in the trees or smell mysterious aromas and if you look carefully some magical being will catch your eye mushrooms so i think this will be cute that's what i'm calling a quick read so it'll be a nice break between between all these next clam pearl Okay, so this is the water Pokemon, so it's to read a book set in a different country, continent, or planet. Okay, let's go ahead and go with another book that I had started. It was on a TBR, and I just didn't get to it. Um, so this is Lagoon by Nettie Okorafor. I think I also use this for the same prompt of, like, a different country, continent, or planet. Um, but this one is set in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, as you can see, I've already started it, um, where three strangers, each isolated by his or her own problems, Adora, Adora the marine biologist, Anthony, the world's famous rapper, and Agu, the troubled soldier, wandering the beach outside Lagos, Nigeria's capital city. They're more alone than they've ever been before, but when a meteorite hits the ocean and tidal wave overcomes them, these three people will find themselves bound together in ways that they've never imagined. Together the, with Iodel, a visitor from beyond the stars, they must race through Lagos and against time itself in order to save the city, the world, and themselves. So I think I stopped because it was just, there were, it was a particular, like, overbearing, um, abusive husband who is getting help from a religious figure that is taking advantage of his partition, parti his, his congregation. I think that's, yeah, it was just a lot. Um, but I'm hoping to get back into it. Uh, it's one that I've been wanting to read, so I think it'll be really good. Sorry, this is distracting. Um, so yeah. Oops, sorry. I just, <laughs> this is the last one. I just immediately pick it up and look at it. Um, but yeah, this is the final. This is Carvana. Carvana. Um, which is a dark Pokemon, which is to read a horror. And... Okay. So for Carvana... Uh, I'm going to pick up Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver. I know this is mostly like a romance thriller, but there's horror elements in it. even says dark as like the second genre that's listed on, in Goodreads. I've been seeing this everywhere and I've been wanting to read it, um, but I can't find it audibly anywhere, which makes me think it's really like restricted um, in terms of whether it's like an audible exclusive or like, I don't know if this was through an independent publisher first. Um, or what, but I want to read it and I just, I just want to figure out where I stand with it because I've been seeing this one everywhere. I've been seeing Leather and Lark everywhere and I've been seeing Inklings of the third book. So I'm just like, okay, let's just get this out of my system and just go ahead and read it. So that's my pick for Carvana. Oh, let me, let me, let me tell you what's about. Every serial killer needs a friend. Every game must have a winner. When a chance encounter sparks an unlikely bond between rival murderers, Sloane and Rowan, they find something elusive. The friendship of two like-minded pitch black souls who just happen to enjoy killing other serial killers. That's all I know. That's all I really want to know. So that's my pick for Carvana. 
And that is my TBR. It looks bigger than it actually is because it's just reading one of these bottom library books. Um, so then hopefully my wrap up will include a, hopefully a large amount of these. I'm being, po I'm like trying to be, think positively that I'll get some of these done. Um, and then that way when it comes to my October TBR, I only, I can pull like more from like my already pulled stacks, um, of Pokemon cards and add to it. So yeah, I don't know, we'll still, I'm still figuring it out. So yeah, that's my September TBR. Let me know if you've read any of them. If you have, um, please let me know your thoughts. Please no spoilers. Otherwise, thank you so much for sticking with me. I know I was gone for a good amount of time. So yeah, thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope that you are in the mental mindset to enjoy your reading. Uh, let me know what you're excited to read for the month of September. Um, Otherwise, if you don't feel like answering, don't have the spoons, let's go ahead and put a mushroom emoji for on a mushroom day. Why not? So, yeah. Like I said, hope you have are in the mental mindset to enjoy your reading, and I will see you hopefully in another video very soon. I don't plan on taking another hiatus, but I didn't plan this one either, so we'll see. But yeah, hope to see you in another video very soon. Thank you.